A gun has reportedly been recovered at the scene of a mass shooting at a Brooklyn subway station. That's right. At least 10 people were shot. Five of them are in critical but stable condition. Ten other people were injured. The FBI has joined the NYPD's manhunt to track down the suspect. That person has been described as a black male last seen wearing a green construction type vest and a gray hooded sweatshirt. Officials say the man was a passenger on the subway train when he took a canister out of his bag and opened it. The train filled with smoke, and that is when the suspect opened fire. At this time, there is no known motive for the shooting. This comes as New York City has faced an uptick in crime in its transit systems. New York Governor Kathy Hochul spoke about the devastation during a press conference earlier today. This morning, ordinary, ordinary New Yorkers woke up in anticipation of a relatively normal day. They left their homes en route to school, en route to their jobs, and to a normal day, as I mentioned. That sense of tranquility and normalness was disrupted, brutally disrupted, by an individual so cold-hearted and depraved of heart that they had no caring about the individuals that they assaulted as they simply went about their daily lives. This individual is still on the loose. Joining us now from outside NYU Langone Hospital in Brooklyn is CBS News correspondent Meg Oliver. Hi, Meg. So the number of injured people has increased throughout the afternoon. What is the current breakdown right now? And do we have any word on the conditions of any of the victims? Yeah, good afternoon, Tanya and Lana. And as you mentioned, the number of injured has increased throughout the day. Right now, the current count was about 29 people that were injured. We're outside NYU Langone in Brooklyn, where there are still about 11 patients inside. Their injuries range from everything from gunshots to smoke inhalation. As you remember, this happened more than six hours ago now, around 8.30 during the height of rush hour, and uh, a smoke device was let off in the subway car, and then the gunman started shooting. They traveled for one full subway ride where they were finally able to escape. And we've heard reports of people running to their rescue with tourniquets and helping the wounded. Right now, we do know that some of the subways are still have suspended their service in the area. The good news, though, is some of the schools have started to dismiss students. They have been in lockdown for most of the day. We have started to see some parents come and get their children and bring them home right now. But this is still a very active situation. The manhunt is underway. We know that the suspect is about 5'5", five five, a black male, overweight. He was wearing a gas mask and a green vest on that subway when he started this attack this morning. We also know that Mayor Eric Adams told our local WCBS affiliate here in New York that the security cameras on board that subway station were not working. And mm. so that is something that we have been waiting all day for, to have some sort of picture of this suspect mm. who has been on the run now for more than six hours. Yeah, so, Such I a mean, disappointment that those cameras were not working, right? Right, but hopefully with all the other cameras throughout mm. New York City, law enforcement will be able to figure this out. Uh, Meg, you're not far from the scene of the shooting. Uh, I hear some horns honking behind you. How does the area look now? Are people back out on the streets? There are more people out on the streets here outside the hospital, but over there, we were located at the 72nd precinct, which is between the two subway stations, the one where the attack happened and the one where people were finally able to escape to safety. And that place was completely crawling with law enforcement. We had the NYPD, we had FBI, we had multiple helicopters overhead. You couldn't go a foot without seeing law enforcement. Other than that, the residential area, the neighborhood was very quiet. Uh, the store fronts were still open, but all of the schools were under lockdown and the subway stations had suspended service. So there was not a lot of activity other than law enforcement completely crawling around that area. Right, Meg, you mentioned, of course, the schools within a mile radius of the subway station were in lockdown. Now we know school is out or soon to be out. So are the students being allowed to leave? How are they handling dismissal? 
Yeah, Tanya, that just started happening within the last 20 minutes. Schools started to dismiss uh, just about 20 minutes before 3 o'clock, and so they were letting students leave the building, and they were letting the parents pick them up. When we were over closer to the scene, there were no parents outside waiting. Uh, we went and looked around a couple, an elementary school and a high school. It was very quiet, and I suspect that a lot of the parents felt that that was the safest place for their children to be. So they were waiting for further word. They found out that they were allowed to leave at dismissal. And so, no, most of those families have simply gone home. It's certainly a scary situation knowing that the gunman is still at large, right? right? I, I wonder if, uh, have you heard anything more, Meg, about whether law enforcement says that the subways are safe for people? I know that, that certain areas of the subways are still closed down, but there's a lot of people who are looking at mm -hmm. taking the subways right. at the end of the day, even leaving school. What are the latest, what's the latest that you're hearing on that? Well, I mean, as you can imagine, if you take mass transit in New York City, it's going to be a complete mess if your normal subway line is down. So I think at this point, Mayor Eric Adams is trying to reassure the public that this is it's still safe to go on mass transit. As you know, crime has been on the rise in New York City and other major cities uh, throughout this pandemic. But we have seen a string of a recent crime related activity, you know, it during a long mass transit and other areas of the city. So I think for the most part, New Yorkers have been cautious, but at the same time, they're trying to reassure the public that this was an isolated incident. Absolutely. Well, Meg Oliver in Brooklyn, thank you so much. We appreciate it.